Hello, it's Jennifer Harding Marlin, an attorney that works at the law firm J.H. Marlin Law, a law firm that specializes in citizenship by investment. So today's video, I'm going to talk about my experiences traveling during the COVID-19 pandemic and a little bit about my thoughts on different countries and overall about traveling during the pandemic. So since the start of the pandemic, I've traveled to multiple different countries. I've spent some time in St. Kitts and Nevis, Portugal, Sweden, St. Martin, St. Bart's, and Canada. Some of them I had a similar experience and others I had a completely different experience. So in approximately September of 2020, I do believe, I, I spent some time in Portugal. I actually ended up meeting up with one of our former clients, Heidi Shakos from Crypto Tips, who did the Citizenship by Investment program, and she's also done a couple of videos about her experience obtaining citizenship of St. Kitts and Nevis. And so while I was in Portugal, um, there was minimal restrictions at the time that I was there. There was only restrictions where wearing a mask if you were going into a shop or going into a restaurant or going to the grocery store. And then soon after I left Portugal, there was more restrictive measures. There was lockdowns uh, amongst other restrictive measures, curfew. And uh, luckily I didn't experience that. But I don't, I can't really comment on the current situation in Portugal, but when I was there, it was relatively, I guess you could say relatively, um, life was continuing on uh, similarly. Then uh, after spending time in Portugal, I spent a few months in Sweden. So I had read a lot in the news about Sweden being a very free country and taking much more open-minded approach and a completely different approach than most of the world in regards to COVID-19. So I wanted to go and experience it firsthand and I think what's incredible about Sweden is that when you arrive at the airport, absolutely nobody is wearing a mask. Like if you wear a mask in Sweden, they can they can definitely spot you out as a tourist because there's no mask wearing in shops or restaurants. And um, the sports centers are open, so I spent a lot of time at the pool in Sweden. And it all in all, it but life continued very much as normal. Having spoken to locals in Sweden, they um, they indicate that sort of their government has been indicating to them to take limited or limit the amount of public transport that they take and obviously be conscious of other people and their health due to COVID-19. But it's, it's, it's incredible to see how the approach that Sweden has taken compared to other countries in the world that have gone in the completely opposite direction. We have a lot of clients that are spending time in Sweden or that want to relocate temporarily to Sweden. So following my time in Sweden, I spent some time in St. Martin. And what's interesting about St. Martin is that it's one of the countries if you want to travel to, there's no, um, you don't have any quarantine once you're allowed to enter the country. So you need a PCR test to enter the country. Um, but the, after you've entered the country, there's no sort of a couple day quarantine or anything like that. You just have to monitor your temperature for the two week periods and obviously report symptoms if you experience symptoms of COVID-19. But for the most part, St. Martin is very open and therefore tourists um, have come. They're the only places that you need to wear a mask in St. Martin are at the grocery store and at the pharmacy. If you wanna to go to the restaurant, nobody wears a mask. There's lots of people that gather and have beach parties and events going on and everything's open. Uh, everything's open. There was a period of time where they did shut down the borders. France had announced that it would be shutting down its borders and therefore the supply to the overseas territories. And so for a period of time, there was no flights uh, for St. Martin and St. Bart's. And um, the only, you couldn't fly between St. Martin and St. Bart's, but you could take the Voyager boat between the two islands. So this was a way to travel between both St. Martin and St. Bart's. But in St. Bart's, they have a little bit more strict in terms of mask wearing when you enter the restaurant and making sure that you know you have your mask above your nose in certain places. But for the most part, um, life in the, the Caribbean has been very, very normal with everything continuing to be open and people continuing to enjoy themselves and spend, live a, an outdoors lifestyle. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, I wanted to say this about the St. Bart's. Prior to the border shutting down, it was a very popular tourist drink destination with people from all around the world coming on vacation. And uh, I spent some time living, uh, spending time in St. Jean area. So you would constantly see planes uh, landing over Eden Rock. So every five minutes there'd be a plane, a plane, a plane. There's so many people, it was so busy. It was one of the busiest seasons for St. Bart's. Lots of people interested in buying real estate in both St. Bart's and St. Bart's. 
uh, and other Caribbean islands just because it's more free as a way of sort of protecting assets during a time of when governments around the world are, are taking drastic measures to reduce and restrict the freedoms of people. So, and then the most interesting and most crazy travel experience has been traveling to Canada. So my family, most of my family lives in Canada and I wanted to spend time with them. And the problem with them if they came to see me is that if they wanted to return to Canada, they would have to quarantine for two weeks. And a lot of people didn't have time in my family to quarantine for two weeks. And therefore I made the decision after having not seen my family in a really long time to travel to Canada. So it was interesting living, leaving from the Caribbean. I was required to take a PCR test before boarding my flight to get, and I first landed in the United States. I then had to subsequently take another PCR test because Canada border would not recognize a non-US PCR test. So I took another PCR test upon arrival in the States. Had I flown directly to Canada, I would have been required to quarantine for a period of time at a government designated hotel at my own expense. And so I didn't want to do this, so I flew to the States and I decided that I would take my suitcases and I would walk across the border because if I walked across the border, I'd be able to quarantine at a home. Uh, so this is what I did. Again, when I got to the border, I had to do another PCR test. I then had to, once I was at home uh, or at a home in Canada, I then had to subsequently, uh, you know, respond to emails and phone calls and people would show up at the doorstep to make sure that I was actually in fact in quarantine, despite the fact that with all these PCR tests that cost me over $600, that it was clear that I did not have COVID-19. So I think it was just such a, a headache and a hassle just to enter Canada. And it goes to show the different approach that different countries have to COVID-19. And I think being in Canada, I definitely observe a lot more people uh, uh, talk about COVID all the time and there's COVID in the news, and there's lots of uh, people talking about the vaccine, and lots of people have gotten the vaccine, and everyone's always asking you, asking me, you know, if do you have the vaccine, do you not have the vaccine? So it's just really interesting to see the different approach that different countries have taken to COVID-19, but in all, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my travel experiences in different countries, and just to say that traveling's a lot more expensive, especially if you have to factor in taking multiple PCR tests, as well as the cost of flight going up a lot, as well as it's a lot more stressful, especially coordinating, taking PCR tests, making sure you meet the requirements to enter a country, constant changing regulation and constant countries changing their entry requirements, and just staying on top of everything. And, and you know, you can't just all of a sudden one day decide that you're gonna fly to another country without taking any sort of preparation measures. So all in all, this just kind of summarizes my experience. I do look forward to being back in the Caribbean very shortly. Um, so yeah, so if anyone else has experiences that they want to put in the comments below in regards to their travels during the COVID-19 pandemic, I'd be interested in learning what you have to say about this topic. All the best. Bye for now.